Welcome back YouTube. Today we're going to wire this trailer up for exterior lights. If you've never wired in trailer lights and brakes before, I'm going to try to walk you through this process. The first step is to get a plug-in that's going to match the electrical receiver in your tow vehicle. My trucks both have a 7-pin connector, so I need 7-pin plug-in for them. With a 7-pin connector, it has a tab here that fits into the slot in the receiver. And one thing you'll notice on my GMC is that that slot is at the top of the 7-pin connector. But on my blue Colorado, that slot is in the bottom of the 7-pin connector. They're both going to take the 7-pin connector the same. You're going to have to rotate the 7-pin plug-in to fit the Colorado versus the GMC. Once you plug the harness into your tow vehicle, you need to establish the color of the wires for each set of lights. There are a couple of different wiring diagrams that are applicable here. I'm going to be using the RV style of 7-pin plug-in on the pop-up camper. For example, after I plug in my harness, I'm going to decide which color wire coming out of the harness will give me electricity for my tail lights. I'm going to turn on the tail lights on the tow vehicle and I'm going to use a 12 volt test light to determine which wire has electricity flowing through it. On the test light, I connect the alligator clip to a good source of ground, a metal ground on the frame of the vehicle. Then I take the sharp point of the test light and stick it onto the metal part of the wire. I'm not going to strip any wire back because I don't want these wires touching each other. I could pop fuses and I could cause all kinds of short circuits. In this view, I'm showing you that the electricity for the taillights is running through the green colored wire. Next, I want to determine what color wire will lead to each turn signal stoplight. For this test, I'm going to turn off all the lights. I'll turn my key on and I'm going to turn my right turn signal on. Since this is the right turn signal, my tester is showing that the brown wire is going to have the electricity that is going to cause the right turn signal to flash, just like in my test light. Now I'm going to test the left turn signal, and I'm going to find out that the red wire provides electricity for the left turn signal stoplight. The white, according to my diagram, should be ground, so no electricity should be going through it. I could hook my alligator clip to the metal part of that wire and use that as the ground while I'm testing as well. The black wire is a 12 volt hot lead. That means it's going to provide electricity to like cigarette lighters and accessories. You could also use that black wire to recharge a battery in the pop-up trailer. And I can test the yellow wire and find out that it provides electricity for the backup lights. And the blue wire should be the wire that goes from the brake controller straight to the trailer brakes. Once you've figured all of that out, you need to have the wire in the correct size and style to be able to wire the trailer. In this view, I'm showing you the difference between solid core wire and stranded wire. Solid core wire is usually used in buildings and houses. You need to use the stranded wire that's being shown in this view. Another thing to consider with the wire is the size of the wire that you need. For the lights, you need to use 16 to 18 gauge wire. For the brakes and the black wire, which is the hot lead, and the white wire, which is the ground, you need to use 10 to 12 gauge wire. When mounting and wiring these lights, there's something that you need to consider. All of these lights need a positive and a negative on the wiring. They come from the factory with a black positive wire and they ground with the negative through the screw. What they're relying on is metal contact between the screw and the skin of the trailer. However, the skin is mounted on wood. This is all wood. This is an insulator. It's not going to conduct electricity. It's not going to give you the ground you need. The wood is mounted on top of the metal frame. For every single one of these lights, you're going to have to add a white ground wire from the light to the frame for each one of the lights to be able to work correctly. In this view, I'm going to show you how to prepare those white wires for the grounding on those lights. For this, you're going to need your white wire. You're also going to need a crimp-on connector and a short length of heat shrink tubing. You need to strip off about a half an inch of insulation off the end of the wire. Then you will slide on the heat shrink tubing and then slide the 
crimp-on connector on the end of the wire. Next, you'll take some crimp-on pliers and squeeze the crimp-on connector onto the wire. Then you're going to slide the heat shrink tubing over the crimp-on connector and use a heat gun to shrink the heat shrink tubing. Make sure to give it a tug test to make sure that the wire is tight and the heat shrink tubing is sealed. And then you can plug in the white wire into the negative side of the light. In this view, I'm going to show you another way of attaching a ground wire to one of the lights. I'm using a pair of wire cutters to clip off this brass ring so that I have a straight piece of brass to attach a crimp-on connector to. Follow the same procedure as I had before. Strip off some wiring, install a crimp connector, and some heat shrink tubing. I'm sorry about the focus. The autofocus is pretty tough when I'm working very close to the camera. Once I've completed this, I have a ground wire for this light as well. Now it was time to install the lights on the outside of the trailer. I had to drill a hole through the trailer on the outside so that the wires would be able to run to the inside. I put caulk on top of the skin and underneath the light so that it would seal up any holes that may be in the skin. Once I had all the lights installed on the outside, it should have all the bare wires hanging on the inside. All of these wires will be covered up by paneling later on. Now it's time to connect all these wires together so that the lights can work. I began by drilling a specific half inch hole through the deck of the trailer so that I could run the wiring up from the harness into the trailer. I stripped all the wires and began connecting all the same color wires together. In this case, I twisted them together and used soldering iron and solder to melt the solder so that it would join all the wires together permanently. I used heat shrink tubing to seal up all the connections after I soldered all the wires together. A different way of joining all these wires together is to use these crimp-on splice connectors. These are used on trailers all the time and they're perfectly acceptable as well. The way these work is you put the connector on the main wire and then you slide in the accessory wire parallel to it. Then you take a pair of pliers and you squeeze the aluminum. Then you take a pair of pliers and squeeze the metal crimp into both wires. This is supposed to pierce the insulation and create a bridge between both wires. Once you've crimped them together, then you can snap the blue cover over the top of it and seal the connection. When you install the harness on the tongue of the trailer, you need to leave enough slack in the harness so that both the trailer and the tow vehicle will be able to turn and hit bumps and dip without pulling on the harness. Once you've got the harness clamped onto the trailer, then you need to run the wires down the side of the trailer inside the frame to protect the wires. Next is to crawl into the trailer and begin connecting all of the lights from the trailer to the harness in the front of the trailer. In this view, I'm going to connect all of the white wires to each other and to the frame of the trailer. Now that all your wires are connected underneath the trailer, it's time to hook the trailer up to the tow vehicle and plug the harness in 
and test all the lights to make sure that they're going to work correctly. Hopefully all of your lights work correctly, but if some of them are not working correctly, now is a great time to troubleshoot them and figure out what went wrong. Most likely if any light doesn't work, your problems are going to be the ground became disconnected or the positive wire became disconnected. I hope this video has helped you wire in your trailer correctly. Thanks for watching. I got a lot more to come.